So hi and welcome or welcome back. So we'll get straight into our, our yin class today. Um, there's no props needed at all. You might like, so I've just got a couple of blankets which I'm going to use for sitting on and maybe for some protection for the knees. So if you like, grab a couple of blankets or, or a cushion. That's all, all we'll be needing. And come to start seated then. So you'd like to be seated comfortably. If you prefer, you could also sit on a chair. So for any of these seated parts, feel free to sit in a nice chair where you can sit up nice and tall, shoulders above your hips. Okay. And just let your hands come to rest. Arms are nice and soft. And you might let your eyes gently close. And just take a moment or two, maybe noticing any sounds that you can hear around you. Sounds outside and sounds inside. You might notice the sound of your own breath. Just gently observe it. Maybe you can let your breath slow just a little, deepen just a little. If you like, you're going to blink your eyes open once more. We're going to start with a three-part Taoist breath, so movement with our breath. So just let your arms come to rest down by your side. And we're going to inhale, reaching out, lifting up for the sky, maybe looking up. You can exhale, bring your hands behind your head and then push away to the walls either side. We're going to inhale, fingertips to our shoulders and exhale, push forward, chin towards your chest, rounding your back. Inhale, palms turn up, you're going to lift up for the sky and exhale, come to fold forwards wherever you might come to. And we'll let the next inhale peel us back up again, reach up for the sky, lifting up. Exhale, hands behind your head, pushing away to the walls. Inhale, fingertips to your shoulders. Exhale, pushing forwards, rounding the spine. Inhale, palms turn up, lifting up to the sky. And exhale, folding forwards. And we'll try two more of these, inhaling up, lifting up high. And exhale. Inhale to your shoulders. Exhale, push forward, chin towards your chest. Inhale, palms turn up, lift for the sky. And exhale, fold forwards. And last one, inhaling up. And exhale, pushing away. Inhale, fingertips to shoulders. Exhale, pushing forwards. Inhale, palms up, lift up high. And exhale, fold forwards. And just pause a moment or two there, wherever you've rested to. And gently um, peel back up once more. 
the shoulders a little roll. So we're coming through a few movements, more yang type movements to start with, and then we're going to move to the to the pure yin part of the class. So if you like, you're going to take your right arm, reach it up and over to the other side of your head. Your other arm could just rest down by your side. And then letting your hand rest against the opposite ear, you're going to let your ear fall towards your shoulder just gently. So a hand that's resting on your head, it's really just resting there, you're not pressing, you're letting gravity do its job. This hand that's on the ground is going to tiptoe away as far as it can get. Maybe it just lifts a little bit up off the ground. And depending on where you're tight, you're hoping to feel a stretch either in your neck, maybe along the top of your shoulder. Um, just the right amount of stress there, what we're looking for. We'll take another couple of breaths here. And then you're going to stay roughly in the same position. Just rest that or lift the hand a little off your head. You're going to turn your head to look down towards your right thigh. Sorry, it might be your left thigh. I'm getting confused with the camera here. So looking down towards this thigh here. And then just gently let your head press back up into your hand once more as if you're trying to lift your top ear up towards the ceiling. And again, it's just gentle pressure with your head on your hand. And then you could lift your head back to centre. Release the arms down. And just pause. And we'll try the other side. So just whichever side you haven't done yet, your hand rests against the opposite ear. You let your ear just gently fall towards your shoulder and the opposite hand, the one that's on the ground, is going to walk away so the fingers can't walk any further. And then just maybe let your fingers lift off the ground. If that puts too much strain, you can just rest on the ground. And again, this hand is just gently resting here, it's definitely not pushing. You can always close your eyes, so anytime you like to. And we're just waking up these often rather tight muscles around, around our neck, around our shoulders. See if you can relax the legs, relax the buttocks. Take another couple of breaths here. And again, just release the hand that's on your head slightly so you can turn your head to look towards, so for me it's to looking towards my left thigh. Place your hand back on your head again and gently press your head up into your hand. So as though you're trying to lift this top ear up towards the ceiling. And it's often just a slightly different area of tension that you'll, you'll find. And again, both hands are soft. You're not pressing into your head. Hopefully just enjoying the, the gentle release here. And again, let your head gently come back up to centre, release both arms down for a moment, shrug of the shoulders. I'm going to bring our hands behind our head then, you can interlace the fingers. And I'm going to keep sitting up nice and tall through the spine, but bring my chin towards my chest, let the elbows come towards each other. And as though you're trying to push your elbows away from you as well. 
They don't have to come all the way together, but they're pushing away and coming slightly together. And again, this time you're pressing the back of your head up into your hands. And again, maybe just notice the different area of tension you might find here. So possibly between your shoulder blades. And then bring your head nice and slowly back upright once more. We're going to stretch the arms straight out to the walls either side of you. And then see if you can picture your shoulder blades on your back and you feel your shoulder blades move right up and they roll back and they come all the way down. So it's not going to be just our arms moving. If you think of your shoulder blades maybe as, as wings attached to your back and you're trying to roll your wings all the way, all the way round here. So those large, large shoulder blades on your back, you can feel them come forwards, up, back, and then they're coming down as far towards your waist as they can, and then we'll go the other way. So just let them circle in the other way. Your arms can be straight or they can be straight-ish like mine are. Try one more. And release the arms down. Again, just give them any kind of little shrug they might like. Lovely. So we're going to come to the first of our yin poses now. Make your way over onto hands and knees. And this is where it might be nice to have a blanket. So just be kind to your knees, especially <laughs> if you're a little sensitive sometimes. So onto your hands and knees. Give yourself enough space in front of you. I just didn't. So from hands and knees, we're bringing our right forearm parallel to the top of the mat. And then you might find where well, you're going to stretch your left hand forwards. And you can either, either keep your elbow down on the ground, or you might find your elbow lifts off the ground. Bring your head to rest onto your right forearm. And just take a while to settle there into this first pose, first yin pose of ours. So your head, if it doesn't reach to your forearm, it might rest onto a block or a blanket. And if your left hand stretches forwards, you can think of drawing your hips back, letting your chest, your heart melt down towards the ground. So you're going to stay there in that pose while well, I just come back up for a moment. So one is to set a timer so we know how long we're going to be in the pose. And then the other is to talk you through it a little bit as well. So I'll just show the pose we're in once again. It's known either as part of melting heart pose, half melting heart pose, sometimes called quarter dog. And we're going to be, or rather you're going to be in this pose for three minutes, roughly. And that's the thing about you. So again, stay in the pose. I'm getting up to give you a little chat about what we're doing. Some of you already, already know. So our yin poses, we hold them for a long time, three minutes, which can seem a long time. So the first thing I'd like you to do in each pose is to find your edge, your right amount of effort. So 
where you are in the melting heart pose, you could have your left arm resting onto the ground, your left forearm resting onto the ground, you might have your head resting on a block, you might be feeling quite energetic today, that left forearm is really stretching forwards as far as it can go, you can press your hand into the ground, keeping it engaged, feel your hips drawing back towards your heels, and so wherever you are, you should be feeling some effort, some stress into the left side of your body, possibly up around your shoulder, your armpit, down the sides of your waist, even into your hip. So you found your edge, your right amount of effort. And then the second thing we're doing, just keeping an eye on the time, is to relax into this pose and it's to relax the target areas so maybe try and relax your left shoulder relax your hips so it's to notice you're not clenching you're not tensing them it's still taking effort to be there but not over effort and then the last thing which is just about 30 seconds left is to find a stillness in the in the pose. So in each of our yin poses, it's the right amount of effort, it's the relaxing, especially around the target area or areas, and then finding a, a stillness. And that can be the challenge as, as it can be sometimes a little while. So you're going to gently come back out of that pose, you're going to come back to hands and knees for a moment and maybe just come through one little cat cow stretch just to check in, see how you feel. And we're going to come straight to the second side. So if you bring your left forearm parallel to the top of the mat and then stretch your right hand forwards. And again, it can come all the way off the mat if it needs to, it really doesn't matter. Bring your forehead to rest onto your forearm and take a moment or two there again to, to settle into it, to maybe have a little wriggle, find where you're comfortable. And again, your heart, your chest is melting towards the ground. That's why it's a melting heart pose. Your right hand can be active, can be reaching forwards. If that's too much effort, let your right arm rest down on the ground as well. And again, I'd like you to stay there, please, for a little longer while I come back up to set the timer. And again, to talk you through a little bit more about what we're doing here in our yin class. So I'll show you the pose once more in case in case you're new to it or wanted to have another, another look. Right arm reaching forwards, pull up your chest, melt it towards the ground. And although you can't really see, I'm drawing my hips back towards my bum, back, to, oh sorry, back towards my heels. So there's a, an effort, a, a stress along the right side of my body at the moment. So again, just staying there in that pose. As I come up to tell you a little bit more about yin in general. So the reason we're holding the poses for, you're holding them, thank you, for three minutes, it's so that you can work more deeply into the joints. Um, this class in particular, we're working a bit into the shoulders, the shoulder joints, um, maybe a bit around the neck, a bit around the, the sides of the waist. But unlike 
yang classes and other forms of exercise where you might be concentrating more on muscles. Here we're looking to put some stress into the joints. So it would be the tendons, the ligaments, the connective tissues around the joint, the fascia, and it's to apply a mild stress to this because stressing your joints can sound a little scary, like you might not want to do that. I shouldn't say scary, it's not scary. But that's the whole point about the mild stress. There's no way you want to be putting 100% effort into stressing your joints. You want it to feel mild, I'm not going to say nice exactly, but definitely that you can be there for three minutes. You're not holding your breath. You're hopefully not grimacing and pulling strange faces. So just have a little smile wherever you are. A little smile to yourself, a little smile at me if you like. Take a lovely deep breath because you're nearly there. We're nearly finished with, with this side. So one more breath. You're doing brilliantly. And again, you're going to make your way gently just back up onto hands and knees. And this time we'll have a little bit more of a, a wriggle out to loosen up. So give your shoulders a nice little bit of a roll around there. And just maybe come through another cat cow. So it's just to let your, your sit bones lift behind you, your heart reach forward, and then let your spine ripple back up towards the ceiling. And just let it be a little bit organic. If your hips want a little bit of a wriggle from side to side, your shoulders want a little bit of a wriggle. So this isn't particularly technical at the moment. It's more having a little wriggle out between poses. And there's no one, <laughs> see, you're lucky there's no one can see you, so it really doesn't matter how you wriggle or what you do. And when you're ready, we're going to come to lie forwards onto our fronts. So just starting, maybe resting onto your forearms. And if you do have a blanket, it might be nice to have a bit of a folded up blanket. Just handy in front of you if you've got another one. So I'm going to start by sliding my right arm underneath, or right across, so the back of my hand is on the ground. And then the first option might be just to stay there with your first arm out in front of you. If it's available, I'm then going to slide the left arm to the other side. So my arms are crisscrossed. One arm in front of the other and from there if it's okay just let your head come to hand towards the ground give your hips and your bum just a little wriggle from side to side again just to check your bum hasn't clenched at all again just gonna set the timer here and i'm gonna stay with you in this pose so out of solidarity, so I know how it feels as well, into your shoulders, or it's more into the tops of your arms here, quite possibly. And we're still looking for our edge, so where you can go where it's not too hard, not too easy, and really relaxing. And then finding your stillness. There's a quote from Thich Nhat Tan. It's breathing in. I calm my body. Breathing out. I smile. So dwelling in the present moment. Knowing this is a wonderful moment. Breathing in calm. Breathing out, smile. 
present moment. Wonderful moment. And if you like, each time you breathe out, maybe think of breathing out with that smile. You might see if you could smile through the eyes. Maybe smile through your nose. You feel your nose have a little smile. And you smile through the mouth. The corners of the mouth just twitch up. And smile through the whole whole face. Your whole face is alive. And maybe you let the smile come all the way out to your fingertips, all the way down to your toes. Breathing in calm, breathing out, smile. And lifting your head, we'll make your way back up. Just into a bit of a sphinx for a moment. Maybe have a little shoulder wriggle. Now we're going to come straight to our second slide. So for me, I had my right arm under first, so this time I'm going to take my left arm under first. And again, may not want to come much further than that, you could just rest on your other arm here in front of you for support or it can be out in front of you. If it's available, you're sliding the other arm out in front. So it's the backs of the hands that rest on the ground, palms face towards the ceiling. And again, have a little wriggle. So it might be that your legs, your lower back tent, might be your fingers tent. Give them a little wriggle, let them release. Take a breath or two there, and again, just let your head come to wherever is comfortable. If there was a block or a book to rest it on, you could also rest it there. And again, I'm going to set the timer, stay here with you. So we are holding our poses today for, for three minutes. If you... Ever felt the urge to stay a little longer? You could always pause it, stay for a couple of minutes longer, but I wouldn't stay for much more than five minutes in any of these poses. And you could always come out sooner too. There's, there's no obligation to stay for the full length of time. I just want to come back to that idea of stillness. So the first thing, or the, maybe the easiest part of the stillness, is the stillness of body. No, that's not always easy, but it's something quite visible. We can pay attention and we can ask our body to be still, maybe for three minutes. Obviously, if there's any pain, remove, but otherwise, looking for that stillness. So you're still and, and solid as a, as a great mountain rooted down into the earth. Your peak reaching up towards the skies. And even though storms and rain and wind will come along buffeting you, you're there. So 
strong and, and tall. Lovely big mountain. And what's that stillness of body? And then we look for a, a quietness of breath. The breath's not going to still, but it's going to slow and steady. And it just gradually finds its own slow, steady and quiet rhythm. And this steadiness of breath is going to help lead us to a, a quietness of mind. That's our third part of the stillness. Again, gently untangle your arms here. And we'll come into, again, just a bit of a sphinx for the moment. Your shoulders, a little wriggle from side to side, you can move the head. And again, it's just whatever feels nice. Wriggle them round. And then it might be nice to just come and lie onto your front for a moment, let your head turn to one side. You can always close your eyes, we're not going to fall asleep. Take another breath. And you're going to come back up into the Sphinx once again, or back up onto your forearms. So we'll do one more thing here on our fronts. This time we're going to stay in a Sphinx mostly in a sphinx pose so if it's available you might have your shoulders above your elbows your forearms onto the ground if that's causing any pinching or discomfort in your lower back you can bring your arms further forwards if that still causes any discomfort in your lower back you can simply lie all the way down onto your front try and have your head facing center so that's still going to give you some work into the shoulders, into the back. If you're okay with it, we'll be in a, a regular Sphinx pose. And just for a moment, you're going to maybe tense your feet or flex your feet, clench your glutes, even clench your hands, even pull a face. Yeah. <laughs> and then relax a little. Take a lovely breath. We're going to do that once more just for fun. So tense everything, glutes tense, feet tense, hands tense, very stances, and relax. Lovely. So it's just to really check we're letting go here of any of those tension points. And this sphinx is going to be a soft one. So if you like, you can let your shoulder blades sag towards each other, your belly sags towards the ground. And even your head, you could hang towards the ground, or you could rest your head into your hands, which is what I'm going to do. My head gets heavy sometimes. And let your eyes close. After all that tensing and releasing, let everything soften. And this is my reading at the beach pose. It's my other name for it. And I know we're not likely to be at the beach right now, but you could just imagine you're on the lovely warm sand and you can feel the sun just gently on the back of your head, that spot between your shoulder blades. And you feel the warmth of it all the way down your spine, across the back of your buttocks, the backs of your legs, and the soles of your feet. The 
It might just be a gentle breeze blowing. You can hear the sound of the waves. We're going to stay for a little longer on our beach here. Either staying just as you are. There's no need to move. If you'd like to, just for the last 30 seconds or so, if you fancy a little bit further, we're going to bring our hands to the ground. Let them face out 10 to 2 on the clock. And I'm going to start to straighten the arms. Maybe even walk the hands back a little bit. So that's as far as mine would like to come. And again, if you tense your glutes, let them soften. Two more breaths here. And gently come all the way back down. And again, just let your head rest onto your hands and turn your head to the side, whichever side you didn't previously. From there, you might just be able to roll over onto your back. If you need to turn around so you're still facing, um, facing the video, do so. Gently give your knees a lovely little hug. Rock a little from side to side. One last pose I'd like us to do. And this one's going to be well, one last pose before she rests, and that is let your legs come out straight. Well, let the arms reach up over the head. They can either come out straight, they could be more in a, a cactus position or more of a V shape. Or if your arms are happy to, maybe hold on to your elbows. So again, it's what's right for you at the moment. All of our yin is listening to your body, your shoulders, what's going on there at the moment. So from here, I'm going to walk both my legs over towards the right or my right. So I'm keeping my bum where it is. And then I'm going to unclasp your arms for this. Start to shift your torso over towards the right as well. Actually, it might be nice just to take hold of the wrist of one hand with the other hand. And then you're going to step your left leg on top of your right leg, just if that feels like a good idea. If all of that was too much, keep your arms out in a nice V shape and keep both feet down on the ground. So again, I'm just setting a timer so that we're not here too long in a lovely banana pose. So this one is Bananasana. to that idea of stillness. You have your stillness of body. You have your quietness and steadiness of breath. And just being aware of the breath can help with that. And then part of our yogi practice is that our breath and our, our mind and our body, they're all connected, but a control of the breath, a focus on the breath, can help us to, to quieten our mind. If we just say to our mind, hey, stop, 
that's too difficult. Your mind's going to probably go off on a roller coaster ride of its own. But if we just try, just for the rest of this pose, just see how much you can inhale. And then how long you can make each exhale. That's all we're trying. How long we can make each inhale, how gentle. And how long each exhale. And just let your arms, your torso come back to centre, your legs come back to centre. Take a moment there. Possibly the two sides of your body feel a little different. And then we'll walk the legs towards the other side. So I'm walking mine towards the left, I'm going to wear the camera. I might have got my left and right wrong. And then again, your torso, your arms stretch towards the left as well. As long as you've done that, you're doing the opposite side to what you just did. Again, maybe take hold of one of your wrists with the other hand and you can let your, your that's gonna be my right leg, take, come on top of my left leg. And if that felt too much, again, just let your arms Come out into more of a B, keep both legs on the ground. So you're bananaing around to the other side. And again, I'm just setting a timer. So I keep us all here for a nice equal amount of time. Back to that lovely focus on the breath. That's a nice slow inhale. And you're breathing in calm. And a lovely long exhale. And you're breathing out with a smile. We might find that this awareness on the breath maybe does help quieten your mind, even just for the duration of this class. So just for this pose, try not to let the mind wander. It doesn't matter if it does, if it's wandered off anywhere at all. It's to see if you can notice when it wanders and bring it back to the breath. So we're not going to beat ourselves up for it. It can wander as often as it wants. But each time it does, you're just gently reminding yourself. I'm focusing on the breath for the moment. And your mind it's not in control of you. 
you can ask it to, to pause, to focus on the breath. Sometimes if the mind does want wander, it helps just to acknowledge it. So just to note to yourself, I was thinking. And now I'm going to focus on the breath again. That so you're mindful of where you are, what's happening. And you could bring your arms, your torso back to centre, uncross the legs if they're crossed, bringing them back to centre. It's probably going to be nice to rest your arms down by your sides. You can give your shoulders a bit of a wriggle. If you'd like, maybe one at a time, hug your knees into your chest. Have a little rock from side to side. And then if you do have a blanket, you can cosily cover yourself up with it as gently and elegantly as possible. And especially because we're working on the shoulders, it's going to be nice. I'm just wriggling away from the walls, but I can do this. Let your palms face up a little bit away from your body. So you chest, your shoulders stay nice and open and then just let your eyes close. We're finishing in Shavasana. The whole weight of your body, we're just allowing it to sink into the ground. Give it a little thanks for everything it just did for you. Your eyes are closed. Your eyelids are heavy. I'm just going to finish with a, a short focus on the breath. So just keeping the body as it is. Just going to imagine that we're inhaling in through the left nostril, in through the left side of the body. And let yourself exhale out through the right nostril, the right side of the body. Inhale through the right. And exhale left. And then inhale through both nostrils, up through your third eye, between your eyebrows, all the way down the back of your spine to your sacrum. And exhale from your sacrum all the way up through your spine, through your third eye, and back out through your nostrils. Just one more like that. Inhale through both nostrils, your third eye all the way down the back of your spine to your sacrum. Exhale from the sacrum up through the spine, third eye, and out through the nostrils. We'll do all that once more. Inhaling through the left. Exhale through the right. Inhale right. Exhale left. Inhale through both nostrils, your third eye, down your spine, 
the sacrum. And exhale from the sacrum, the spine, the third eye, and then out through the nostrils. Inhale through your nostrils, the third eye, down your sacrum, spine to your sacrum. And exhale back up the spine, through the third eye, and back out through your nostrils. And then just let your breath find its own regular rhythm. And feel free to stay in your Shavasana just as long as you might like. If you'd like, I'm just going to bring my hands to my heart. And just wishing you peace, happiness and wellness. Namaste.